I have sleep apnea. I have sleep apnea. I have sleep apnea, and this is my story. I'd always enjoyed spending time with my family and friends. But for several years, I barely had the energy to carry on a conversation. I was just so tired all the time. It felt like the world was moving at a faster pace than I was, and I couldn't keep up. It was awkward, to say the least. I no longer wanted to be around other people. I felt very alone. Work was going really badly. I just couldn't concentrate on what I needed to get done. No matter how much coffee I drank, I was always sleepy. It was a struggle to stay awake during meetings and phone calls. I was worried I would lose out on a promotion, or maybe even lose my job. Could you take care of that right away, please? Yeah, I, do. I will. My loud snoring was affecting my marriage. And it wasn't just snoring. My wife said I would frequently choke and gasp for air. She was afraid I would stop breathing, but she was also really upset because all the racket I made kept her from getting the sleep she needed. It got to the point where she didn't want to share a bed with me. I knew I had to do something or my marriage would be over. I was so tired, I fell asleep twice at the wheel. It was getting scary. I had no idea what was wrong. I didn't know what was happening, but I had to do something. I spoke to my primary care doctor, and he referred me to a doctor qualified in sleep medicine. It's going to get diagnosed if you do have it. I met with the sleep physician and described the problems I was having to her. She said it sounded like obstructive sleep apnea, a very common and highly treatable disorder. And that sleep study will tell us more about your interrupted sleep. Your body undergoes many physiological changes during sleep, including ones that affect your breathing. Particularly when you sleep on your back, the soft palate sags and the tongue relaxes and slides back, which can partially obstruct the upper airway. When the obstruction is severe enough to decrease the amount of air reaching the lungs, it is called a hypopnea. If the upper airway collapses, blocking the airflow by 80% or more, it is called an apnea. Hypopneas and apneas last 10 seconds or more and can greatly reduce the amount of oxygen in your blood despite your continued efforts to breathe. The most common and noticeable symptom of sleep apnea is loud chronic snoring. During an apneic episode, there is an increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the blood. This buildup triggers a defense mechanism in the brain, which jolts the body into resuming normal breathing. Usually, the person doesn't fully awaken, but merely rouses long enough to regain control of the muscles of the upper airway. The problem becomes serious when these interruptions occur so frequently that they rob you of restorative sleep. My doctor said that a sleep study was the only way we'd know for sure what was wrong with me. She told me that home sleep tests were available, but she recommended that I spend the night in a sleep lab, which could do a more comprehensive study. Bands are placed across the chest and abdomen to detect movement there. This tells us whether someone's breathing is easy or labored. Sensors on the chest keep track of heart rate and rhythm. Electrodes are put on the scalp to monitor brainwave activity. This allows us to determine whether someone is asleep or awake, and if he is asleep, what stage of sleep he is in. We measure respiration with an airflow monitor placed above the lip. A sensor on the finger tells us whether enough oxygen is entering the bloodstream. 
Electrodes are put on the legs to detect another condition that can disturb sleep, periodic limb movement disorder. I'm good. You're great. We'll thank have you. a great night's sleep. Well, thank you very much That'd for your help. Great. Good night. Good night. I was in an unfamiliar bed, all wired up. I was a little anxious, but most of all, I hoped they'd be able to help me feel better. By that time, I was so exhausted, I could sleep anywhere. It was definitely strange, and I wasn't even sure I could sleep, but I had to believe it was worth it. I was desperate. I just wanted answers. The sensors and monitors generate an encyclopedic amount of information about what's going on in the body. The data are analyzed by sleep technologists, who produce a summary report for the doctor to review with the patient. Entire night condensed into one tiny little screen. We have the results of your sleep study. Okay. After the sleep study, I met with my doctor again. Reviewing the report from the lab, she told me that I did have sleep apnea. Was that you were actually um, having interrupted sleep 36 times in a one hour period oh during the study. It was a relief to put a name to what was causing so many problems in my life. That's the reason that but I needed to know what I could do about it. Okay, well then, so what happens next? Currently, there are a number of treatment options depending on the severity of the condition. We begin with lifestyle changes, such as losing excess weight, sleeping on your side rather than your back, and avoiding alcohol, sedatives, and cigarettes. In mild cases, these can sometimes be sufficient. Specially fabricated oral appliances can be used to keep the tongue in place and the airway open. People seeking a permanent solution sometimes turn to surgery. A variety of surgical procedures are used. Some are minimally invasive, but others involve excision of large amounts of tissue from the throat. As with all elective surgery, the risks and benefits must be carefully weighed. The treatment that is the most effective for the most patients is the use of pressurized air delivered through a face mask. Called CPAP, which is an acronym for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, it keeps the airway open and the lungs full. I went back to the lab for a second night study. The sleep tech fitted me with a CPAP mask and adjusted the pressure on the machine that blows the air. While it was not the most comfortable way to sleep, I noticed that I did feel more rested in the morning. I had misgivings about doing this at home every night, but I was willing to give it a try if it would help me get better. I was glad to know that there were many different styles of masks to choose from, as well as a variety of machines. I felt sure that I could find one that would be comfortable to use. My doctor had explained that heated humidification would also be a big help. Treating sleep apnea can mitigate other serious health problems, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and depression. The doctor had told me that even with CPAP therapy, I might still experience some residual sleepiness and that she would be able to help me resolve that. I can't say that it was easy getting used to wearing the mask, but I was able to sleep so much better. I could enjoy my life again. My job performance improved, and most important, I had my wife back with me. It's funny, since I was diagnosed, I found that a lot of people I know have sleep apnea. It's crucial that they get treated, and that's why I'm telling my story. It took some time for me, but now I have a lot more energy, and I can make it through the day. Am I 100% better? Of course not. But I feel like I'm making real progress. If you're exhausted all the time like I was, see a doctor. I did, and it changed my life. You are not alone. The American Sleep Apnea Association, a national nonprofit organization, is a resource for your questions about diagnosis and treatment. 
The ASAA sponsors a network of support groups around the country. It's called AWAKE, which stands for Alert, Well, and Keeping Energetic. There's also the Apnea Support Forum on the internet, where patients can help other patients. Visit us on the web at www.sleepapnea.org or call 888-293-3650.